Yeah. And we are live. And, oh, can you see the comments, honey? I can now. I've just realized I had it on private chat, so I've just changed it and I can see it now. Okay, perfect. Hi, Johnny. Hi, now Nancy. I can't see you, oh, there you are. Oh. Hi, Laura. Hi, Jessica. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Jared. Uh, the Cedar Creole. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, sweetie. Hi, Mandy. Hi, Lady Blind, Blind Wolf. All right. I think we got everybody. All right, so if you're ready, because we have quite a few people in here already. Uh-oh. We keep freezing up a little bit. It's Liz. Thank you, honey. I'm going to try to remember that. Hi, Jen. All right. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, looks like we lost her. Let me make sure that she knows to just use that link again. You guys got to love Mercury Retrograde, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me go back to Facebook. Bear with me, guys. Oh, I just heard a. Oh, I thought she just popped in. Oh. There we go. Oh. Bear with me, guys. I just heard. Okay, there we go. Oh, welcome back. Thanks. Sorry, I don't know what happened there. I don't know if that was my internet just went meh. And didn't Mercury meh. retrograde. Yeah. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we have um, Saturn retrograde and Pluto retrograde. And uh, there's there's like a whole bunch of them. Well, seven isn't there in retrograde at the moment? There's five. Five, five. in retrograde. Okay. Yeah. Astrology is not my strong point. It's not mine either. I'm just learning it. That's what I've been studying as um, of lately. And this, oh my gosh, by Julianne Victoria. Oh, cool. It's Vedic, about Vedic astrology. So oh, I've been, pardon me? Is that Julianne Victoria with uh, Through the Peacock Eyes? Yes. Oh, cool. And her study deck which is friggin' excellent. I mean, I just love it all. There's so much to it, so much to learn. It's like mind boggling. Yeah, it's I can terrible. that out. <laughs> it is. Uh, I think it goes tomorrow. It might be today, Mendy, it might be. So it's just like giving us that one last oomph. No. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> just to mess with you today okay <laughs> all right so i would say what is the name of your channel and why did you name it that but that's actually your name correct it is actually my name yeah yeah it is my name is there a reason that you decided to keep it your name it wasn't my name when i first started my channel so when i first started my channel i it was called geek girl does tarot which was also the name of my Instagram account, which I started with a friend of mine. But it was really, really limiting. I found like I'd put myself in a box and I wanted to be able to talk about more. And I am just not very creative, <laughs> I don't think. So when I started thinking about names I could change it to, I just, I couldn't think of anything. And I was like, well, you know what? I like my name. I <laughs> I don't mind people referring to me by my name, so I'll just go with that for now. And if I just if I think of something better, I'll change it. And then it's kind of just stuck ever since. Sometimes I think I, I, think, change, the, I think it's pretty smart though. Many people just brand their own name, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. If it changes, you know, whatever happens, if the direction of my channel changes or my interests change or whatever it will all still fit because it's all still me, which is ultimately what my channel is. Right. <laughs> Makes perfect sense to me. So 
how would you label your spiritual path then? And I know labels. <laughs> I don't really mind. I don't have a problem with labels. I think labels are useful in general to help people have a foundational starting ground for conversation. I think if I was going to label myself, well, I do label myself. I think I've talked about it before. I would say that I'm a psycho-spiritual pagan witch. So my paganism is very much about, you know, I believe in a goddess and I believe in working with nature and all that kind of stuff. I also, uh, personal development and personal psychology and the psychology of just being in the world with other people are a very spiritual thing for me. And then which, because witchcraft is what I do, witchcraft is a practice that is separate from my belief system, although very much intertwined. So it's there's not a short title and it's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> but I think it nicely covers everything. Yeah, we've seen Puppy. They've seen Puppy. Oh, there, yeah. He was going to come in sooner or later. He'll just wander around behind me and get his <laughs> thing on the camera. And he's a pain, but he's my pain. <laughs> Is he a photo bomber? <laughs> Does he yeah, sneak he in there? Great photos. He's so photogenic. I'm so jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Sully takes better pictures than me, too. Yeah. <laughs> I think they all do, don't they? Yeah. So it helps that they're naturally cute, though, doesn't it? And they've got these big, puppy eyes. Definitely. Definitely. Hi, Julie. Hi, Maria. Um, hi, everybody who I haven't said hello to because my computer crashed. Hi, Lavender. All right. So were you raised in the path that you're on, or did you veer off from your family? No, no, definitely not. My... Um, my dad is Church of Scotland, so my dad is Presbyterian, but he's very, he very, very strongly believes that re your relationship with God is an incredibly private thing. He doesn't talk about it. He doesn't go to church. He doesn't believe in organized religion. Um, and my mom is an atheist, a complete. If she can't measure it, she doesn't believe in it. So religion wasn't really a thing when I was growing up. We didn't go to church. We didn't, you know, we didn't have any kind of religious associations for things like Easter to us was just a long weekend and Christmas was a secular holiday for us to get together as a family. There was no religious upbringing at all in my household. So, and I was always very drawn to sort of wanting a religion or wanting something to believe in or have faith in or very aware that I believed that there was something much bigger than I was so I kind of dabbled quite a bit with different things when I was young when I was a teenager I did a very very short stint of being interested in Christianity that did not last long at all yeah. and then I, I read a lot about Buddhism and different religions and um, I don't know what it's like over there but here in the UK we do when we do religious education at school we do actually study the six major religions so oh. I spent a lot of time looking at all of them and reading about them and then when I was about 16 I discovered paganism and never really looked back I found somewhere that I felt like I really belonged and fit what I already kind of believed for myself and then I just never looked back that probably depended on um like different types of schools over here but for me there was no religion in our school whatsoever we didn't have we didn't talk about it at all other than we did a pledge pledge of allegiance to the flag. Uh, yeah, that's see that's, we, that we, don't, we don't do that over here. But no, but granted, we, that was like a long time ago. <laughs> religious education over here is, is very, very good in that you study the beliefs of all of the major religions and it's very, I mean, it's very basic level and yeah primary school we still went to church and we still sang hymns and things because I went to Church of England schools but the religious education is quite good or it was I mean I admit I was at school a very long time ago now but it was very good when I was at school yeah Laura says that uh, she had it opposite in some ways growing up with the cat 
Catholic family and wishing that they were not religious because I wanted nothing to do with it. And I can see that happening. Yeah. People that are extremely, extremely in a religious family, not wanting to have anything to do with it. And ones that didn't have any kind of like traditional, you know, wanting to delve more into it. Yeah, yeah, I can see how that happens. I think it's it, it's like anything, isn't it? If it's if it's part of your day to day life, it's very easy to want to kind of rebel against that. But then, because religion was almost it wasn't a taboo subject in my house, nothing was ever really taboo in our house growing up. But it just wasn't something that we really talked about. So it was something I desperately wanted a connection with, and that was almost like my rebellion against my parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can see that definitely. Uh, so do you feel supported by your family now with what you do? Do they know that you're oh, yeah. here? Yeah. yeah, when I when I was 16, I told my parents, I've, I've discovered this religion called Wicca and it's really interesting. And I think that's what I'm gonna believe in and that's what I'm gonna do. And uh, my mum gave me a very, very short, but very pointed conversation about being careful with weirdos and not getting involved in any cults. And my dad, for the rest of time, has referred to it as my witchy stuff. <laughs> Your witchy stuff? Witchy stuff, yeah. But they, I mean, they're really good. They, My dad bought me um, the This Might Hurt tarot deck recently because I wanted it. And they've bought me books. And they, um, I've been to a few, they look after my dog when I go to like festivals and things. And my dad calls it my witchy festivals and stuff, so. They, it's not something we talk about, but it's also not something that I've ever felt like I have had to hide from my mum and dad either. That sounds about perfect to me. I mean, especially if they're buying you stuff like tarot yeah. decks. I yeah. Mean, that's wonderful. So do you feel uh, a connection, a stronger connection with a certain element? I, I was actually thinking about this after I read your questions because I answered a very similar question to this on my channel not that long ago actually and I answered fire which I think is a pretty common response amongst witches but actually fire is the element that I most like to use in magic but I think the element that I'm most connected to personally is air which makes sense because I'm an air sign but I am very, you know, I'm, I'm very much an in my head kind of person. Some people, you know, heart people, some people are in their bodies. I'm very much in my head. I'm very analytical and logical and can be more rational than emotional sometimes. And I, and also things like I love music. Music is a huge passion of mine. I love to involve music in my ritual and my spell work and stuff. I just think, Although I love to use fire and spell work, I'm definitely more of an air person. I can see a lot more of my connection with air than anything else. Have you had your chart done? Do you know what different aspects you have in your astrology? I have. I've got um, an awful lot of air in my, which makes, again, makes sense. I've got an mm -hmm. awful lot of air in my natal chart, a little bit of earth. And then I think maybe one fire sign and no water, I think. No water, really? Wow. Or one water sign or something, but there's very little water and fire in my chart at all. I was just doing mine today and I've got, um, I've got two fire, I've got four water, five air and six earth. Yeah, I'm, I'm very, I've got six, I think six or seven air signs in my chart. Wow. So, um, you know, let's just skip ahead. Seems how we're, we're already talking about it. What is your uh, sun sign? Uh, Libra. A Libra. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Do you know what your rising and your moon is? Yeah, my rising is Virgo and my moon is Taurus. So they're both where my earths sit, really. Okay. All right. So what is your favorite or do you have a favorite season of the year? Definitely. Well, um, oh, autumn probably or fall, as you guys would say, or spring. I like transitional seasons like to me they're almost like transitional seasons and I really like them and also they're 
beautiful. Like autumn is the most beautiful season, in my opinion, of the year. So and where I live, to, to like get into my estate where I live, there's a, a road you have to come down, which is just lined with trees either side. And sort of late September, early October, it's breathtaking. It's just breathtaking with all the different colours in the trees and and stuff. And I'm also, I'm really funny about temperature. <laughs> There's only about six degrees of temperature that I can handle and anything below <laughs> it is too cold and anything above it is too hot. So autumn kind of fits really perfectly into that perfect weather. I'm British. I had to bring the weather up at some point. <laughs> we do. <laughs> well, what is that perfect temperature for you then? Like somewhere between sort of about 14 degrees and 21, 22 maximum Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm guessing that's probably in the 60s, 70s area. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah, and that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, silly question, I know, but do you use divination? And if so, what types of divination, divination do you use? I do, surprisingly. <laughs> Obviously, I use tarot. Um, I do, I'm, this year I've been trying to learn Lenormand or Le Normand, depending on where you're from. Um, but I'm really laissez-faire about that. It's one of those things that I kind of just dip in and out of and haven't really taken as seriously as anything else. I do it because it's fun and I want to learn something new. Um, uh, recently, my friend, a friend of mine also bought me a crystal ball because I really want to have a go at scrying. I've tried it before, but I never really had much success with it. So I'm determined I'm going to make something of it. And I've got it into my head that if I have my own crystal ball, that will make the difference. <laughs> <laughs> We shall see. And I also, I do have a couple of pendulums and occasionally I like to use them, but pendulums are, are very much like a yes, no type scenario, aren't they? Whereas I, I like something a bit deeper, which is why I like the tarot so much. And then we were talking about runes as well, which I've tried, but I I just, I don't have the, the brain for it, I don't think. So if you show me a rune, I'm like, yes, that's lovely. What does it mean? What it means, oh, <laughs> What, what does that mean? <laughs> what does ox mean? What does gate mean? I just, I can't make that connection in my brain so much with runes. I'm not sure. That's why I'm taking this course. So we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, so do you, do you know what your tarot birth cards are? Uh, yes. Well, my, my number works down to an eight. It's, so I would strength and then I guess the star by association because that's also an eight number, isn't it? Yeah. Or justice, depending on how you how you arrows, yeah. But for me, eight has always been strength. Yeah, okay. That's what I am as an eight as well. So yeah. you're like bath eight then. Yeah. Um, did you know about that before these questions? I did but i don't know a huge amount about numerology so i did look it up i knew my number was eight and my life path number was eight but i didn't really know what that meant and i looked it up and i have to admit i didn't it didn't really feel mm -hmm. like fit so much i mean there was a lot of things about being good with money and it being very much a money number and i am shockingly bad with money <laughs> shockingly bad. i never have any so maybe that's what it means. I'm good at spending it and I'm good at not having it. <laughs> and things like um, ambition and leadership and things, which are things that I wouldn't necessarily, you things that I would say that I am or that I feel like I am. So it, it's, well, it's something that really didn't resonate for me at all. Okay. All right. So do you know what your uh, significator card in the tarot is? Uh, queen of Swords, definitely. I'm definitely a Queen of Swords. Okay. No, I, but I am. Um, I think again, it makes sense because I'm an air sign. I'm mm -hmm. very much attracted to the swords in general, anyway. So, and I like that. I am very, like some of the more negative things that we associate with the Queen of Swords. Like she's very direct and very blunt and very straight talking, and I am definitely all of those things. De and I, I try and be diplomatic but it 
doesn't tact is not something that comes <laughs> naturally to me i'm very much a straight down the line tell you what i think kind of talker and i think that's very very queen of swordsy okay so um let's see do you have a current favorite deck right now oh good question i think my my decks are over in the corner that's why i'm looking over in that corner randomly i'm not just staring up randomly into space but i think um, I'd probably have three, probably the Light Seers Tarot, the This Might Hurt Tarot. And I just got finished working with the Modern Witch Tarot for the first time. And I was surprised by how much I loved that deck. Considering it's it's really just a, a standard RWS that's been a bit modernized, I really connected with that deck a lot more than I expected to. Really, really enjoyed working with it. That's one I do not have. I do want to get it eventually, but yeah. And the This Might Hurt, I just ordered. I don't have it yet. Oh, okay. I'm very excited about that. It is a it's, gorgeous yeah, deck. A great deck. <laughs> yeah. And of course, the Light Seers. That is by far my like soul deck. So, yeah. yeah I love it's, it. I call it my boho chick deck. It's no. just, <laughs> yeah. It's just got that really bohemian vibe to it, which I yes. really, really love. It's so beautiful. It is so good. So um, do you have a favorite current tarot card that's in the deck? It's always been the strength card for me. Always. Strength is, I, it's the card that is the only card in the deck that is make or break for me when it comes to a tarot deck. I'm really specific about how I like it to be done. So I, I don't, I don't like strength cards that are all about brute strength. I very much like strength cards that are, very, are about internal strength. I'm very picky and it's, all, it's, it's just my favorite card. It, it always has been. I think it probably always will be. I also but have the a light seers one is perfect then, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I love the light seers one. She's like mm -hmm. half lion. Yeah. And I, I also that's also a thing that I really like, which I think I've mentioned before. I really love the a lot there's quite a few cards that have the lion and the lamb in the strength card. And that's something I really, really like. And I love the way that she's mm -hmm. done it in the light seers. Yeah, definitely. So um, what decks are you currently working with? The ones that you, you're talking about that are your favorites? Are those ones you're currently working with? No, I'm working, at the moment, I'm working with the Spirit Song Tarot, which I'm a bit hit and miss about. I didn't, I, when I first got it, I, I love Paulina Cassidy and I love her artwork, but I wasn't sure about the keywords on that deck and how she's very much softened the harsher card so i don't think it's got a tower it's called they've called it something else and they're all very positive words for the cards that we would normally associate as more negative but i quite like that softness and that kindness sometimes sometimes i think that's exactly what we need from a deck so it's this month just seems to have been exactly the right time for me to dig that out and then Oracle deck wise, I'm working with Goddess and Sirens by Stacey DeMarco, which mm -hmm. is a really nice deck. It's another one that took me a little bit by surprise by how much I like it. The artwork is stunning. Yeah. I mean, that's it. Yeah. They remind me so much of like warrior goddesses. I yeah. mean, we're really depicted in here. Yeah, it's very, very strong women, which I really appreciate. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So would you consider yourself a collector? And if so, how many decks do you have? <laughs> Actually, I, in turn, when I look at my, like, offline friends, I was going to say real life friends, like the internet isn't real life, but... <laughs> but I, right. When I look at my offline friends, I'm definitely, in their eyes, compared to them, a collector. Because they all have maybe one deck or two decks, and I have more than that. But when I compare myself to, like, people within the online tarot community, I'm, I'm just not. I've got, I think, 30, 
five tarot decks, maybe 36. And then I've got 24, 23, 24 Oracle decks and five Lenormand decks, which to me actually sound like really big numbers. But when you compare them to other people within the tarot community, mm-hmm. it's like I'm a baby. <laughs> <laughs> you just figured out that tarot decks exist. <laughs> yeah. So you got roughly like 65 decks altogether. 60, altogether. 65. Yeah. That's yeah. Insane. Yeah. And I'm already, I've been looking at my tarot decks recently thinking there's like, there's easily three, maybe even four decks in there that I'm probably going to pass on and, and move out of my collection because I, it's really important for me, like this is no judgment on anyone else, but it's really important for me that if I have a deck in my collection, it's because I want to use it and will use it. If I get to a point where I know I'm probably not gonna use it again, or it's and it's just gonna sit there, then I know I'm done and it's time for me to move it on and to give it to somebody who will actually benefit from it. You know, <laughs> and this kind of sounds mischievous, but when I think of that, I'm like thinking, okay, who can I pass this on to that doesn't do tarot yet so that I can corrupt them? You know? <laughs> who can I corrupt? <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys know you were thinking it. <laughs> so how long have you been reading tarot then? I've had tarot decks since, I think I bought my first tarot deck either in, or not my first tarot deck, but the first tarot deck I bought that I liked and I tried to read with, either at the very end of the 90s or the very beginning of the 2000s, but I never really took it seriously. So I've always had decks, but I only really started to read seriously and really study it in the last sort of two or three years, I think. Okay. So in that time period since you started, do you think that your um, reading style has changed or progressed or? Yeah, definitely. I When I, um, for like the first 17 years that I owned tarot decks, I was very much, a, I always did the Celtic cross because that was the spread that you did. So I always did the Celtic cross and my, I was, it was always very, very book driven. So I would lay out the cards and then I would look at the book and take, see what the book told me all the cards meant and wasn't really very trusting in my own ability to to see what was there and to trust what I saw. And then when I decided to take it seriously and actually learn what the cards meant, conversely, I became more trusting of my own intuition the more i know about them the more likely i am to ignore what's in the book and just trust what i feel Mm -hmm. yeah that makes perfect sense Uh, maria says lol rochelle a different kind of enabling you know it we have got to con for as many as (laughs) (laughs) that's the fun part of it (laughs) world one tarot deck at a time so Exactly. (laughs) But you know what? Honestly, I look at the tarot like it is a major tool of therapy and Mm self-realization. And if more people actually work through the archetypes, we might have less things like what's happening in the world actually happening in the world, you know? Yeah, 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 I agree with you. So, yeah, one one tarot deck at a time, one person at a time. (laughs) <laughs> We're coming for you guys. <laughs> so uh, do you do any daily rituals? Uh, I do. I do a daily draw every single day, which I've been doing for the last couple of years. And um, normally I post it on Instagram. I, but even if I don't post it on Instagram, I still do it. So every morning I'll draw a card for the day. What I'm really not good at is going back at the end of the day and seeing how it actually played out within my day so it's it's one of those things that i do it but it's not necessarily as useful as it would be if i actually did something with it i've done it i must confess i do the same thing i might a week later go back and look and go oh okay 
but then I might not remember all the details of what happened during that week because it's a week later. You know what I mean? So, and I, I keep, so I keep a record of it as well. So I, at the end of the year, I can look back and I can go, Oh, I drew a lot of, you know, like 40% of my year was ones. Cause I am that person who likes to sit down and work out percentages and ratios and things. I am that person and spreadsheets and stuff. I, <laughs> no shame. I don't even care. <laughs> I love but, that. That's cool. I love spreadsheets. No, oh, me too. Yeah. But I am, um, and even then, at the end of the year, it's like, oh look, the uh, this card came up five times. Can't remember what happened on the days that it came up, but it came up a lot. That was useful. <laughs> <laughs> I really need to do more with it. I think. Yeah. Nancy says I often give decks to people that I read who show an interest in tarot. Yeah. That, see, that's a good idea as well. Mm. I don't read people, so that's not really. You don't do uh, like pro professional reading and stuff? I don't, no. no. No, I read for myself and I read for friends occasionally, but no, I don't, I don't read professionally. Hmm. So um, do you remember your dreams? Do you do any kind of dream work? I don't. I um, so I have I have ME or chronic fatigue. I don't. Different people call it different things, which means my sleep is really really unrefreshing anyway in general. And I never, I never naturally wake up. I always I have an alarm to wake me up seven days a week because otherwise I just will sleep all day. So and when I think when you're jarred awake, when you're always jarred awake by an alarm, it's difficult to then keep hold of whatever it was that you were dreaming about and it's something I've never really managed to do it's just something I've never I've always I've it interests me and I always want to do more with it but it the reality of my health at the moment is that it just doesn't work for me it's just not something that I'm capable of really have you always had that or uh, let me see if I understand this so no matter how much sleep you get, no matter how little or how much, you always feel tired, always fatigued? Always. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's tough. It's it is. And it's, it's so even when you do sleep, you're never really sleeping properly. Mm. I don't think I explained that. Close. Yeah. I can't imagine because me, man, I, when I go to sleep, I'm just like dead to the world. I'm just like, <laughs> I mean, snoring and you name it. Yeah. Oh, see, I'm my, the other way. My, my whole family is uh, musical. We all snore. So. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> the only other way, I can't, I can't, like people say to me, oh, are you tired today? And I'm like, well, yes. Yeah. I'm, like, uh, isn't everybody tired all of the time? I just that thought that was the reality of life, but I'm it, it's levels. So I go from being tired to being so exhausted I can't remember my own name. But there's never a, a time when I'm not tired. I'm not exhausted on some level. Have you ever? Because um, I know that this, and you probably have, but have you ever ha been tested for like sleep apnea or anything like that? Sleep apnea, no. I've been tested for nearly everything under the sun, but not sleep apnea, no. But I don't, I mean, I don't snore, I've been told by people who I've shared rooms with. I don't snore or anything. I don't have a problem with the way that I breathe when I'm asleep. So, which I'm, I think is never a lot to do. deep sleep. I just never sleep very well. And, and when I do, my sleep never, I'm never refreshed by it. Not really. I can't even imagine. My goodness. So do you have a favorite uh, holiday or Sabbath? Yule probably is my favorite. And because Yule is the one that um, like I have I, for the last five or six years, I've had a really lovely tradition with Yule where I have a, a group of friends that I call my pagan family. So I have my actual family who I spend Christmas with. And then I have my pagan family who I spend Yule with. And we do very similar. So we uh, share a meal and we exchange gifts. 
gifts and we have drinks together and we you know we play silly board games and trivia games and stuff and it's a very family oriented holiday whereas the other ones tend to be more ritual and you know staying up to see the sun come up if it's winter because there's no way I'm getting up to see the sun in summer when it comes up at four o'clock in the morning <laughs> and stuff. <laughs> Um, and I also like Samhain, but I think Samhain is like the ultimate witchy holiday. If you, it's just, it's got all that stuff that I associate with witchcraft. Laura says that she has um, health issues also that inhibit dreaming as well, or inhibit REM sleep, which means it inhibits dreams. Yeah, so yeah. Sleep. Chronic fatigue does something very similar. You don't really, you very rarely reach REM. And if you do, you don't stay in it for very long, which is why this sleep is never refreshing for you. And it's frustrating when you're, um, when you are on a pagan path. I, I don't know if you read a lot of witchcraft books and pagan books and things, but there is very much in a lot of them, there is, there's very mm. much this working with your dreams and it's almost taken as a given that that's what witches and pagans do they do dream work and when it's not it's just not something that's possible for you it can be incredibly frustrating i can only imagine yeah that sucks so uh do you work with crystals if so do you have any favorites i don't really work with crystals no i have seven crystals that I bought for myself, which I have as chakra crystals. Um, and then I have a few that I've been given over time, but I never really know what to do with them. So I just, I just don't work with them. But I, I think if I had to pick a favorite, it would probably be rose quartz. And I'm not sure if that's just because it's pink and I really like the color pink or if I'm genuinely attracted to rose quartz and and the things that rose quartz stand for or i'm not really sure do you ever feel like any vibrations from them or anything like that not um not generally although herkimer diamonds i cannot touch they give me headache it gives me headaches like and makes me feel sick even the smallest tiniest amount of herkimer diamond i have a very adverse reaction to it's not weird. Mm. But then other crystals, I don't really feel anything. Huh. Very strange. What is so different about Herkimer diamonds? I have, no, I have no idea. Yeah, me neither. Probably nothing. It's probably just my weirdness. No, I'm going to have to research that now. <laughs> I <write> that down. <laughs> That's interesting. And I wonder if that is... If there's it's a thing related to your um, not being able to dream and stuff, maybe. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I just know I don't like it. I don't like the way it feels. Do you have a tendency to get uh, migraines or anything as well, or is it just from that in particular? No, I, I get migraines anyway. But again, migraines can be a side effect of, of chronic fatigue. So. Oh. All right. Sorry. Just writing this down. Yes, <laughs> oh, for research. Um, so um, let me move on here. So do you have any special skills that you would like to tell us about? No, I couldn't think of anything. <laughs> I genuinely couldn't think of anything. And I'm one of those people like, I, I you know, I, I'm, I'm a single, so I use dating sites and stuff, right? Bear with me, there is a point here. <laughs> and you know, when you have to write down in dating sites, maybe you don't, I don't, you probably don't use them, Michelle, but. <laughs> I have been doing a long time. But you have to write down your hobbies and you know, tell something interesting about yourself. And I have the most mundane <laughs> hobbies. I'm like, I like to watch films, I like to read books, and I crochet. <laughs> I'm just not, and I like music. I'm, I'm generally not that exciting. There you go, though. You just, you um, crochet. I do crochet, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, what kind of stuff do you crochet? Uh, well, I make 
generally I make blankets. I, I love to make blankets because they're easy and you can do them in front of the telly and you don't really need to concentrate so much. But I've made, I made myself a bag um, and I've made a purse and um, like mandalas just for decoration and stuff. Pretty much I'm at that point now. I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but I'm definitely an intermediate crocheter. I'm not a beginner. And if you gave me a pattern, pretty much any pattern, I could probably do it because I can read a crochet pattern. So, and I think okay, that's you, definitely yeah. a skill, just saying. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and you can make mandalas, hang them yeah. from your walls or whatever. That is really friggin' cool. Okay. All right, then I'll take that. Tarot mats, right? Mandala tarot mats. Yeah, that would be pretty cool. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. I would get one. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see here. So do you currently have a favorite book or artist or both? Books is too hard. Books is way too hard. I read a lot. I do read a lot. Um, and okay. So what are you reading if it's hard for a favorite? What are you reading right now? Uh, what I've just finished reading, I just finished it the other day, which I think everybody should read. It was incredible, was The Hate You Give by Angie Thomas. I finished that yesterday or the day before. And I'm not a huge fan of YA. So when I read YA and I really, really love it, I make everybody read it. <laughs> you have to read book. It's the best book ever. But I say that about a lot of books as well. This is the best book ever. It just means it's the last book that I read that I really enjoyed. <laughs> but it was a phenomenal book. It's absolutely amazing. And Heather's favorite book is not Twilight, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started because we'll be here forever. <laughs> Heather is not a fan of Twilight. Let's leave it at that. So The Hate You Give, yeah. And um, I also read the, uh, I'm really, really into sci-fi and fantasy. Fantasy's always been my favorite, but I've really got into sci-fi this year as well. So, but then I also really like horror and I really enjoy crime. So if you asked me to name my favorite book in genres, I probably still couldn't do it. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I'll just say the hate you give because that's the last one that I read that I really Okay, enjoyed. I've got another question for you. How many books do you read in a month, approximately? Uh, this year, last year it was six books a month. This year I've managed to get it up to eight books a month. Oh my goodness gracious. No wonder it's so difficult to find a favorite. <laughs> yeah, I read a lot. I, I read... Uh, 55 books last year and this year I'm trying to read 80 and then next year I'm hoping to get it up to 100 so wow that's fabulous and then artist wise um I really like Waterhouse which is <laughs> I don't know if that's a bit cheesy but I really like Waterhouse I really like that kind of like Arthurian Greek mythology stuff that he does the magic circle is one of my favorite pieces of artwork ever and then more modern, I like an artist called Jack Victoriano, who is a Scottish painter from a uh, particularly famous in the 90s. And he does some really lovely, like he does a lot of artwork on of people on the beach. And it's just really, really lovely. <laughs> I'm not a huge art person. I don't really understand art like academic people do. I just look at it and go, I like that or I don't. Yeah. So um, Julie says that she feels like she is a reading failure <laughs> after hearing your numbers. <laughs> She's writing a book and that's even better. Like, why read books when you can write your own? <laughs> oh, <laughs> so Maria says, me too, Julie. The last books I read, fiction, actually were Twilight. <laughs> I love Twilight. <laughs> <laughs> I I have no problem with anybody else liking Twilight. I'm not I'm not one of these people that's like I hated something so no one else is allowed to like it or conversely I loved something so no one is allowed to dislike it. No, I'm very much art, literature, music, films, it's all really really subjective as it should be and I'm really for me 
my taste very much boils down to did it make me feel something or not and twilight definitely made me feel stuff i just don't think it was the stuff she was going for <laughs> oh <laughs> well righty then um do you have a current tv series that you are enjoying right now i do i just started watching humans on netflix so it's an old series I, I don't know if you've heard of it it's a british series about um artificial intelligence and i discovered it on netflix on wednesday and i'm on episode six of season two so Damn. I'm, <laughs> season the only eight episodes long but still <laughs> i've watched rather a lot I watched, I, I don't work on a Wednesday and I discovered it on Wednesday and watched the entire series in one day, first season. So <laughs> I'm really binger, enjoying it. Yeah, I can see that. You're a binger, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I am a binger, yep. <laughs> I am. Yeah, I can go up through a few, definitely, in a night of episodes, yeah. I just get myself to that point. I don't know about you, but I was, so I was watching it and I got to season, to like to episode six and I thought, well, you know, it's probably about, I, I really need to think about going to bed in the next hour. So I'll just do one more. And then you watch one more and you think, well, there's only one episode left now. I might as well watch the last one. <laughs> but you could do that forever. I do that. That's when I watch TV. I'll go to bed at night and I watch it. My husband, he can lay down and put his head to the pillow and within, I don't know, five minutes, he's snoring. Okay, me, I can't. It takes a long time for me to wind down. So I'll put something on and then I'm like, oh, well, that was good. And that episode ended. It's 12 midnight. I should be going to sleep, but... I'm not tired. And that was and really good. <laughs> and I could watch it again. If you, you watch know? Netflix and Amazon Prime, they encourage it because they end <laughs> one episode and they just start playing the next one. And you think that's playing now. I might as well watch it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. So um, what about a witch movie or a series? What is your favorite? Or do you have different, you know, more favorites? Um, well, The Craft. The Craft and Practical Magic are probably two of my favorite witchy films of all time because they were they came out at exactly the right time for me. They came out when I was a teenager. They um, really tapped into something or, for me and uh, were almost pivotal in putting me on the path and the direction that my life actually went in in terms of paganism and witchcraft and stuff. So they will always, always be my favorites I think and then series wise it's not really a witch series but I call it one anyway it was Buffy the Vampire Slayer but again um, I was I was the right age it, I was their target audience and it was just I've seen it so many times if I went on mastermind Buffy would be my specialist subject I've seen it that many times. <laughs> that's funny I you did you watch Angel too then I didn't I watched, I've seen one season of Angel and for some reason I just never stuck with it. I just, I never oh. carried on with it. And I know people, there's a lot of people who think it's better than Buffy, but I really- But I love Buffy too. I love mm. Buffy too. I watched the whole dang thing, but I also watched Angel. Yeah. Angel seemed more adult to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think Angel had an older audience, didn't it? Definitely. Yeah. And what yeah. I saw, I enjoyed, but some of it was a bit, I mean, a bit too much for me when, you More know, you had, well, not even dark, a bit like, you know, when you had Dala coming back and then all of a sudden she was pregnant and things. And I was just like, yeah. I, 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 this is no, I mean, I know we're, we're talking about vampires and stuff, but <laughs> this is pushing the bounds of what I'm willing to believe just a little bit too far. <laughs> what about um, Charmed? Did you watch Charmed? I didn't. No, I've seen, for some reason, I've seen the very last ever season of Charmed all the way through. And other than that, I've only seen random episodes here and there. Oh, see the earlier seasons, in my opinion, were the best ones. Definitely mm. not the later ones. But yeah. Should, I should go back and watch it. Really. I think I would enjoy it. From the, what I've seen, I think I would have really enjoyed it. But 
it was one of just for some reason it was when it was out it completely bypassed my notice mm -hmm. i i loved it definitely i still watch it on uh reruns and stuff like that yeah that's one of those that you get pulled into because they come on first thing in the morning you're not quite ready to get up for the day and that comes on you're just laying there oh, like, oh okay so you get sucked into it yeah. kind of things. so do you prefer coffee or tea definitely coffee but it's funny because when you when see when you ask british people this question like when Americans say tea, they mean all different kinds of tea, right? But when you are when British people, when we say tea, we mean what you call English breakfast tea. And then everything else has another name. So everything else is either green tea or fruit tea or herbal tea. So when you say tea, I think English breakfast tea, which I hate. But I do actually like other teas. And it, when it comes down to other teas and coffee, it really just depends on my mood and the time of day. Gotcha. Right, I told my teacher in school they need to do a class reading or I'm not going to do it so well. Um, Sailor Moon is available there. Yeah. On Hulu? Yeah. I've never seen Sailor Moon. I've never seen that either. I haven't either. Ah, uh, Julie said she had the hugest crush on Wesley. That's funny. Angel needed some time to get good. And as soon as it was, it got canned. Oh, I know. Exactly. Apparently yeah. when it ended, it was really popular. So it was a real surprise when it, it, that it ended when it did. Because it still had a massive audience. Yeah. I've seen the very last episode of Angel, actually. I, for some reason, I've seen the last episodes of random series that I haven't seen all the way through. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. Is there a time period other than now that you feel drawn to? Um, not really. I mean, I, I love history. My degree is in history. That's what I, I love, but I'm very much love history. Like I think, I think what they, it's called social history, I think is what they actually call it, but it's history from the perspective of individuals as opposed to events or time periods or um, groups of people. And so I'm very much interested more in, um, particularly I'm very drawn to like women throughout history. So I'm very interested in like Boudicca and Joan of Arc. And probably the, the thing that I know the most about is Henry VIII's wives. That's the thing that I've read the most mm -hmm. about. I've watch the most documentaries on and things i've got no interest in the tudor period at all but i'm very drawn to henry VIII's wives and their stories and the contribution that they made to british society and stuff so and then i'm very interested in how events throughout history have affected normal everyday people's lives is more what i'm interested in than any specific time yeah that's pretty cool so like a lot of the stuff that you read so you like like maybe jane austen stuff like that different time period pieces like from like a female perspective kind of thing i mean I, i'm not a fan of jane austen <laughs> but um but then i'm not a fan of romance romance novels are not really my thing and jane austen is obviously a, a romance writer but i do like books set in different time periods very much from the perspective of the people, you know, like um, Oliver Twist type stuff, where it's mm -hmm. very much about the people that lived mm -hmm. in those time periods and how they lived. Yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. So if you could have a deep conversation with anyone during any time in history, who would it be and why? Maybe Anne Boleyn. I mean, I don't think I would have liked her very much. I don't think that she was a particularly likable woman, but she certainly for a while was one of the most powerful women in, certainly in England. And I'd be very interested in hearing her side of the story. Because, I mean, some of the things that we 
believe about Anne Boleyn even now. There's no there's no historical evidence for some of the things that she was accused of is mm -hmm. crazy sounding. And I would really love to be able to hear from her perspective, which is something we don't really get throughout history is the perspective of the women. The, and when women are talked about in history, they are very much talked about from a male perspective. So I would, even other women, like, again, Boudicca, Joan of Arc, I'd love to hear from, I, I don't know if from the horse's mouth is an appropriate way to talk about women, but you know what I mean. Yeah. Anne Boleyn, I've always been very fascinated with her life as well. Uh, I don't. I think it was her family. She was doing what her family was telling her to do. Because, I mean, even before her was her sister, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Had a relationship and, and lost, he lost interest with her. So then Anne Boleyn comes in. And, I mean, the guy does not have a good track record with women. I mean, trying to get rid of them in whichever way he could, you know, in order to take on his next what have you. I mean, look at how he got rid of his first wife. And I would say normally that the other woman, yeah, she would be at fault too. But when she's got her political family trying to force her into this relationship, what is she supposed to do? Women didn't really have a voice back then. I mean, I think, um, I, I think Anne Boleyn and Henry VIII were actually very much in love at one point. I think they, the, the beginning of their relationship, I do think they actually were in love. Or at the very least, they were infatuated with each other at a very deep level. But he was, he was basically a spoiled brat. I mean, he was, he was the most powerful man in, certainly in England at the time. And nobody ever said no to him and he got whatever he wanted and people to him were just like toys they once they'd reached their usefulness he just discarded them for the next thing but i do think she uh she made some very bizarre choices which led to her ending up in the situation that she did but then there's things that people say about her like she had a sexual relationship with her brother which is highly unlikely it's more likely that he was having relationships with his male friends than with his sister right but. right yeah i mean that whole family that whole family line yeah, yeah kind of messed up i watched like the um what was it the white the white 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 queen or white was it queen. the white witch yeah white queen. Like Which, the they world. were supposed to be like witches or seers or something. And then it was, I think Henry VIII's mother was like a seer, wasn't mm. she? And her mother's mother was a seer. I don't know. Anyways. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I that All that just fascinates me, definitely. So... If you could go to any event in history, what would it be and why? I really don't know. I really, um, I really genuinely don't know. There are massive events in history that I wouldn't want to necessarily live through, but would like to, and I wouldn't necessarily want to experience, but because I'm so interested in how things affected people, mm -hmm. there is that almost like that, that. I'd love to visit that moment in time to talk to people and to really f experience it for the way that people experienced it. But also I really don't want to live through those periods of history. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, like, like the second world war, I did a, the second world war as part of my, was a massive part of my degree, particularly the Holocaust and also the Armenian genocide in, in the First World War. And I certainly wouldn't want to live through those periods of time. But from a purely almost anthropological, I don't think that's the right word, but sociological thing, I would love to be able to see people living in those times in times. I don't I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, how much do you think really history has really been depicted correctly 
from the point of view from the people that were actually there. That's the whole thing. Yeah, right. I mean, history is it, history isn't fact. So this is the thing. We have this idea that history is fact and static and it absolutely isn't history is fluid and it changes all the time it changes based on new evidence and new mm. interpretation of old evidence and what we're told is what the people who were the most successful wanted us to know it's history is not fact by any stretch of the imagination exactly and it's also perspective right yeah yeah absolutely um so do you have a website? No, I don't know. Okay. I believe I do have down below, which I can't see at this moment, your Instagram. What all did I get on there? Let me find it. Sorry, guys. I should have had this up. Let me just find it. Here we go. This is your channel and yeah, I have your Instagram and your bookstagram down below, I believe. So down in the description. So anybody can access that down in the description below, but there is your um, channel. Please go and check it out, you guys. Hi, Dripless Mystic. Um, see. Hello. Hi, Julianne. All right. So how long have you been on YouTube? It'll be two years in August. Okay. Did you lurk around before you made your channel? I mean, were you in the community before that? No. Or was it yeah. No, I never do anything the sensible way around. I just wake <laughs> up and go, oh, I think I'd quite like to do this. And then I just do it. <laughs> it works out. But, so I kind of did it the other way around. I set up a channel and then started to in interact on other people's and meet other people. I did it really back to front. No, you just went for it. Right? I did. You just went for it. I love that. So uh, what is the direction that you envision for your channel going forward? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I'm in that weird space at the moment where I don't really know what I want to do with it now. I'm, I'm really, I've really enjoyed what I've done with it over the last couple of years. And I've certainly learned a lot about the things that the types of content that I like to make and the types of content that I really don't enjoy. Um, but I don't, I don't know. I know I, I want to keep talking about tarot. I definitely want to keep talking more about spirituality and personal development and the things that really are really important to me. Um, but how, how that ends up looking, I'm really not sure right now. Okay. It's just very organic. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll just see what happens when it happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so what do you wish to gain from your channel going forward? And the same thing that I've always wanted, really. I mean, I, I'm i very, very lucky that I have a very strong community, pagan community, offline where I live. Um, so I've always had really good access to other pagans and other people who lead like I do and who have very similar views as, as I do, um, which is both a blessing and a curse, I think, in some respects, because a lot of the people that I knew and was communicating with on a regular basis were white British people. And I'm obviously a white British person. And so I really wanted to meet people who had completely different cultural backgrounds to me, completely different ideas to me, who were raised with completely different experiences than me. And I just, I wasn't really getting that where I was living and having my channel has definitely given me that. It's definitely given me access to 
a whole range of wonderful, interesting people and views that I never would have had otherwise. I probably never would have seen or experienced otherwise. And that's I. That's what I want to keep. I want to keep that space where I'm constantly learning and growing from people who are no, nothing like me, who have nothing, almost nothing in common with me, other than maybe our shared interest in tarot or in witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, that is probably the most common answer, actually, yeah. for most. People. Yeah, but it makes sense. That's why most of us are here. Honestly, I think. Yeah. What we from this community. So, hi Donna. Hi Thomas. So, this is normally the the part where I open it up and have people ask questions for you if that's okay. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Yeah. All right. Sweet. Let her have it, guys. <laughs> Anybody's going Be nice. <laughs> Bye Lavender. Have a good one, honey. I've not looked at the comments at all. So if anybody said anything to me or asked me anything, I'm I'm really sorry if I've missed it. It's difficult. Most of them pretty much know now that I the questions are usually at the end. So Jen. Jen, yeah, Jen. Jen says Heather being such a strong air sign, do you actively seek to work on an on the emotional aspect in your life and workings? Yes, I do. Um, it's really weird because although I've got very little water in my chart, I'm a really, really emotional person under the surface. So I'm like, I always say I'm like the ocean. Like I'm pretty calm generally on the set, like what you see, but underneath is all these bubbles of different emotions all the time. Um, but the, the problem that I have, because I'm such an air sign, is that I like to try and rationalize and logic my emotions, which is, is not healthy. It's, it's not necessarily the healthiest way to deal with an emotional response to something because emotions aren't generally rational or logical. So I've had to really learn that my emotions are not a bad thing they don't having an emotional response to something doesn't mean I'm doing something wrong it's how humans are constructed <laughs> and to, I've really had to learn to just sit with them and not analyze them to death which is something I'm really good at but have to have had to really work on just letting what I feel be instead of having to make something logical and rational out of it. I don't even know if that answered the question. Yeah, I think that makes perfect sense. Oops, wrong one. So how is your no buy here going so far? Do you know what deck you want uh, to get from your friend? It's actually going really, really well. I um have had two decks gifted to me, one tarot deck and one Lenormand deck, but I didn't buy them, so it doesn't count. I've had this conversation with my friend, they don't count. Um, and I very nearly got Julie to, um, Julie from Peekaboo Rose has very kindly made me my own Bitmoji uh, Lenormand deck. Um, and I very nearly went ahead and bought it, but we're holding <laughs> off until the new year. So I'm doing really, really well. And I thought my friend had forgotten about our deal, but she <laughs> days ago sorry let me <laughs> that's my dog's head's now going uh, but i've got no idea what deck i'm gonna want from my friend i've seen so many beautiful decks this year and there's so many that i already had on my wish list and although she said i can have any deck that i want like i'm not gonna go out and pick a hundred pound out of print deck from ebay or something because i'm just i'm just not that person but so if anybody wants to let me know what I think I absolutely have to start the new year with feel free because <laughs> i have no idea i'm sorry he is something else somebody just walked by or something who knows it it's just right, woke I, know up. I get it oh I my goodness gracious the joys of furry parenthood right yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so Jared asks, Heather, being on YouTube, was there a point where you realized it got too much, it got too much easier for you? Or it got much easier for you? Um, no, I, I think it was really organic, I suppose, to use a word that you used earlier. I think I just, every time I made a new video, I got a little bit more comfortable about it. And then you, I think, I don't know, maybe your experience was different, but I think you just kind of one day realize that you are a lot more comfortable about it than you were, but you don't really notice that change. It's very much happens over time. And that's not to say that it's easy, even now, it's still hard. It's still hard to put a video out there. It's still hard to sit down and film there's still that i don't think it's ever going to be sitting and talking to your phone which is what i film on is never going to be completely natural or comfortable but it does just become easier over time that's that's been my experience anyway it's just become easier every time i do it it's become a little bit more easier than the last time i did it So Jen says um, from Science to Soul Tarot with Jen, she says, I vote for uh, the Falarcos for you. The what then? <laughs> the Falarcos Tarot. I don't even know what that is. You've not heard of that one? I don't think so. No, no. I've not really been paying attention to decks and stuff because I can't buy any. <laughs> <laughs> That's smart. <laughs> but I've, not, I've been trying not to pay too much attention, so I'll have to go and look that one up. I don't actually know what that is. And the other Jen... <laughs> um, oops, yeah. Gave it a chance. kind of. But I think she said something else before that and just skipped up for me. Oh, yeah, this one. The Shadowland. I do, I have, yeah, 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 I have seen that deck and it is absolutely my aesthetic, definitely. The only thing I don't like is the backs. I'm really not keen on the backs of that deck. That's the yellow backs, isn't it? And I, I, I mean, who likes the colour yellow? And I'm really sorry if I've just insulted like every single person <laughs> in the room. But, uh, yellow is not... Uh, it's just not a nice color. I just, it's very difficult for to make yellow nice. I have a yellow hallway, by the way, so I obviously like the color yellow more than I'm saying that I do. But but I do. The artwork is definitely definitely my style. I also saying that really really want the Nightmare Before Christmas tarot deck. Even if I never use it, even if I just buy it so that I can look at it, get it out and look at it. I really want that deck. That is one of my favorite Tim Burton films of all time. Yeah. When does that come out? Is it September? Soon, yeah, it's definitely soon. Yeah. Painted Owl said uh, that they do not like the yellow backs either. Hi, Simon. No. <laughs> I've just seen Jen though, Science to Soul Jen. I love the backs and yellow. Look, see, now everybody is telling me how much they love the color yellow. <laughs> I was gonna say I do like yellow, and yellow is very much associated with like um, joy and the sunshine and happiness. So yeah, that's a good point. Too much <laughs> yellow can be like overkill, you know. So yeah, it's like that. It's that. Um, some yellows are lovely, but the yellow on the back of the Shadowland is very. Um, I don't even know how to, it's like very radioactive yellow. <laughs> it's a very, it's not, it's not a nice yellow. There definitely are nice yellows, but I just don't think that personally, I don't think that that is a nice yellow, but. Yeah. So Courtney says she doesn't like yellow either. And uh, Jen says she will not hold it against you. <laughs> the other says, I am particularly not fond of yellow either. It's Crayola yellow, she says. Jen, oh, is it? Uh, Jen's Balance Tarot. It's Crayola yellow. 
I'm the worst person to ask about colors because like it, all these people are so, you know, like if you hold up four different pink tops, different types of pink, like salmon and baby pink and blah, blah, blah. To me, they're all just pink. They're, they're just pink tops. I don't, you know, or yellow is just yellow. Green is just green. I'm not really very good at distinguishing between i can see that they're different but i wouldn't have a clue what they were called. Mm. I mean, I, I, different shades of, of colors i think when you put a whole bunch of different shades of one color together it creates such depth in whatever you're working in mm. you know, especially green oh so lush so anyways <laughs> Courtney says almost all of my my whole closet is black. Yeah, and I didn't realize. Did you change your name, Julianne? Just drop the through the peacock's eyes. Okay. All right. And yep, there's Sully. What's your take on the witch's wisdom deck? I don't know if I know that one. Is that an old is that an older oracle deck? Or is that a new deck? I mean, yeah. I have my phone let me because my friend has one uh, an oracle deck very similar name which oh well they do have looks like oracle and tarot i'm thinking but which one are you referring to honey robin a newer one i don't know if i've seen it i've seen the um the Oracle deck, the Oracle, which is Wisdom Oracle deck, my friend has, and it's not, it, it, it's not my personal taste. I think it's a nice enough deck, but it's just not my personal style. But I, I didn't even know there was a new one. I'll have to look that up. He is being a booger. Oh my goodness gracious. Can you guys hear him really bad? <laughs> Yeah, I'm not particularly fond of that Oracle deck. No. If it's the one that I'm thinking. Yeah, no, I'm not. It's the one, so the one I'm one, really purple, like big purple borders with like the circle in the middle. I'm not, Yeah. It, it, it's a nice enough deck, but it's just not my, my personal taste. <laughs> you love Sully, he's fine, okay. And he is upstairs and in the living room, and he's just got this most annoying, really loud bark, especially when he's right next to you because he's Beagle. So when he just starts barking, especially if somebody comes to the door, it's like he's howling. <laughs> That's terrible. Oh, it's like I'm, I've got a Yorkshire Terrier. Yorkshire Terriers, when they get going, yap. And <laughs> yapping is the most irritating sound. <laughs> and he normally he barks. He does actually bark like a big dog. But when he gets overexcited, he yips and he yaps. And it's like, I'm just, this is why I didn't want a small dog. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Lady Blind Wolf says, I didn't know they had a tarot that went with it. That would be interesting. Oh. Yeah, it looked like they had a tarot as well. So he wants to add his two cents in. You know, he always does. He always adds his two cents. Although he is getting better in his older age. <laughs> I'm he's a little over two now, so, <laughs> you know. I found it a place called, what, Fresh Garbage, and I love that store. It's Hot Topic, but better. Oh, okay. I One we of your does that too, Julianne said. Julianne, don't you have um, a couple of, um, are they like Huskies? Jen definitely has huskies, doesn't she? Science to Soul Jen has huskies. Yes, they're Jen. so beautiful. They uh, howl with the crows. <laughs> That's very cool. All right. Well, if nobody has any more questions, Heather, thank you so much for joining me today. This was thank wonderful. You. It was always good to catch up with you. So oh, thanks very much. It's been lovely. So thank you guys, everyone. And I look over here because you guys are all over here on my screen. <laughs> yeah, over here. Thank you for joining us today. And have a wonderful rest of your weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.